engaging the community since 1970. This is WIS Awareness. Good morning and welcome to WIS News 10 Awareness. I'm your host, Leland Pender. Well, this month, there is an opportunity coming up to really help small and minority-owned businesses gather some great information on how they can work with state government and secure projects for their companies. It's the 2018 Bridging Opportunities Contracting and Certification Forum. And this morning, I'm joined by Pam Green and Stacy Gregg, who are both working to really bring all this together. And you all work at different offices, but you're also partners. Exactly. Right. So tell us about that and how that works. Well, I am the director with the, with the Office of Small Minority Business Contracting and Certification, and that's a mouthful, but that's SMBCC. Mm -hmm. So basically what we do is we look to certify minority businesses, um, and then we monitor the contracts that are given throughout the state, and that contracting piece kind of passes over to Stacy as far as what that looks like for the procurement process with these small minority businesses. And so the goal is to really make it as easy as possible in transitioning between both of your offices. Right. Right. Absolutely. In our office, we actually handle all of the large dollar contracts for the state of South Carolina and so we partner with Pam in order to identify smaller and disadvantaged businesses that may need help in finding our services. And so when people come to talk with you all, here are some photos by the way from uh, forums held in previous years, when people come to your office are they usually just overwhelmed, don't know where to start, how to begin, what do you normally see? And the overwhelming piece, yes, is what you see. They're, you know, everything is big government. So they're like, you know, where do I start? What do I, what do I need to do first? And that's mm -hmm. where we come in and trying to say, okay, here's the process and here are the steps that you need to start or to, the steps you need to take. Mm -hmm. And so with us, it's the certification piece that we usually start with our, with our small businesses and then we guide them from there and talk about the procurement process and then try to get them linked up with, you know, different procurement officials depending upon different agencies. So this year, uh, what's going to be all Offered. What can people expect when they come to the fair? Or the forum, rather, excuse me. <laughs> the trade show. So. <laughs> I was wrong all the way around. I'm sorry. The trade show. Okay. Uh, we're, we're excited about 2018. You know, it's, it's apropos about this being awareness and the fact that we're wanting to really bring awareness to these small businesses. Absolutely. With the theme being um, bridging opportunities, we want to make the process as seamless as possible for these small businesses. So getting them in the room with the procurement officials and uh, corporate partners and community community partners, you know, gives them the opportunity to say, okay, I'm in the room to be able to network the business. Mm -hmm. Well, and absolutely, and in, by using the term bridge, to absolutely walk away with nuggets that they can use in order to gain business and find opportunities within government. And really, with these small and minority-owned businesses, sometimes without stuff like this, there is no path or connection to these opportunities. Right. So just kind of describe or outline just how important this is and why folks who have these companies should want to be a part? I think it's about awareness. As she stated, a lot of folks are not aware of the governmental resources that are out there. Mm -hmm. So these types of forums are crucial for us to be able to bring attention to what we have to offer. Mm -hmm. So, you know, outside of the networking piece, we've got some professional development that's going to be offered at the trade show. Um, we have the opportunity to have panel discussions with a few folks to talk about being able to partner with the state and what does it mean. Mm -hmm. um, and those are kind of just down-to-earth conversations of, you know, kind of what do we need to do next. Well, that and what a lot of small businesses don't know is that not only do we value who they are, we need them, mm -hmm. and but a lot of times we don't know how to find them. And so this is key in helping us to identify who they are and make connections so that we can reach back out to them later. And is this for anyone who owns any type of business or is there some kind of your business you're looking for or what? You never know what we're going to have to purchase in state <laughs> okay. government. Absolutely right. never know. So everyone is welcome. Everybody's welcome. All right. So let's uh, talk about the, uh, the trade show itself. Uh, where's it going to be? Uh, what time? How can folks register, get connected, things like that? So the trade show is on May 30th. Mm -hmm. um, it's from 9 to 3. And what we're having are the businesses are able to set up from 7 until 8.30 if they want to do a booth to kind of, you know, basically display what they do. Mm -hmm. uh, it's at Brooklyn Conference Center. Did I say the time? You said that registration starts at 7.30? 
Yes. Seven thirty. Eight thirty. Yes. Right, right, and okay. we actually kick off at nine o'clock. Okay. Um, the actual event it'll run up until three, which we're going to provide lunch, a, a nice hot meal at Brooklyn right. uh, Conference Center. Well, and they'll have time to set up. They'll get some education, and then other procurement officers from around the state will be there, um, right around one o'clock to meet with them and to get those connections. Now, in order to go through this process with you all, you do have to be certified, and that's your office, and that's a process to go through in itself before you can secure any projects and possibly, you know, bring in the dough to your company. <laughs> That's what it's all about, right? Let's be honest. <laughs> bring in the dough? Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But the uh, certification process, mm -hmm. what is that like? What does it take to get certified? What do you have to do? So for our office, certification basically means that, you know, the minority business has to have, the owner has to be 51% owner as a minority business. Mm -hmm. They have to own, control, and operate that business. That's one piece of it. So that's kind of satisfying that criteria. You know, on our website, when you go to our website, which is snbcc.se.gov, mm -hmm. if you go there, there is an application and there's a checklist of information that we that we need. Basically, once that information is either hand delivered or mailed to our office, we review that information and then from there, once we kind of see that you've satisfied kind of that paper criteria, mm -hmm. what we then do is we up a time to go out, talk with that business owner, interview them. It's called an on-site inspection. And that's just making sure that the business is viable, that the person, you know, that's the minority owner or the controlling partner knows that business because, you know, they're becoming a part of a pool or a database that a lot of our state agencies use whenever we have jobs that come up for the state. Absolutely. And they're really is no shortage of small businesses out there. I think here in the state, according to the office, uh, your office rather, 600 and is it 50 certified small and minority businesses in South Carolina. So, I mean, that's the whole state, certainly a significant number here in Richland County alone. Right. But um, there really is no shortage of that, but we just have to know how to get connected and get to them and get them to you all. Right, right, exactly. All right. Anything else you want to add this morning? This is a very exciting event and it's very informational and you've been doing it for several years now. Anything new this year? This year with the, the trade the trade show, I think the, the panel discussion is a new one. Panel discussion is absolutely new. Okay. Right. Um, the other piece is we, we have a gentleman that will come in and talk about some, some networking takeaways. He's kind of considered a success coach. Mm -hmm. And he's going to provide some insights on how to really network your business to kind of plant those nuggets that someone wants to do business with you. And then the other piece is that we have a gentleman that is certified with the state that will talk about being certified with the state and just his success mm -hmm. in being able to have contracts with the state. He's uh, I'll, I'll send a plug for Pella Myers with PNB Promotionals. <laughs> okay. who will be our keynote speaker. Great he will be, and he does great business. We've yes, used him we've over used and him. over again as he's a result awesome. of these events that he's been coming to. He All right, awesome. fantastic. Well, thank you both for coming this morning. Thank, thank you for having, having us. Absolutely. Let's pop up the details for you one more time. If you want to learn more, get involved, or get connected, uh, visit scommerce.com slash events or smbcc.sc.gov to learn more about the trade show coming up. All Thank right. You. Well, June is Mental Health Awareness Month, and next this morning, our guests will share details on how you can support the National Alliance for Mental Illness and the work they do in our area. How do we make a great custom suit? We start by using the finest Italian fabrics and a canvas chest piece that molds perfectly to your body with my signature soft shoulder. And it's tailored by the finest craftsmen in the world, right here in America. I'm Joseph Abood, designing suits for over 30 years. Experience the art of custom clothing made especially for you. Because every man deserves the luxury of a custom suit. Now, available at Men's Warehouse. WIS-TV is looking for organizations that regularly distribute information about employment opportunities to job applicants or have job applicants to refer. If your organization would like to receive notifications of job vacancies at WIS-TV, please notify Stephanie Sheely, WIS-TV, 1111 Bull Street, Columbia, South Carolina, 29201, or email to Sheely at WISTV.com. WIS-TV is an equal opportunity employer and encourages minorities to apply. Did you know you could get life insurance for less than 32 cents a day? With guaranteed acceptance, whole life insurance through True Stage, you can get up to $25,000 in protection with a single phone call. True Stage can help free your family from immediate financial stress when you're gone. Utility bills, mortgages, car payments, those are a lot of things that can add up pretty fast. 
and even on a fixed income, prices fit your budget, starting at less than 32 cents a day. Plus, your price will never increase and your benefit will never decrease. And with no medical tests or health questions, you cannot be turned down for any reason. Call 1-800-810-7968 now for a free no-obligation quote. True Stage offers plans to fit your budget. Help protect your family from immediate financial burdens after you're gone with guaranteed acceptance whole life insurance through True Stage. Call 1-800-810-7968 now. All right, welcome back this morning. We are marking Mental Health Awareness Month, and a great group of people and local organizations are teaming up to raise money so they're able to continue serving the mental health needs in our community. Joining me now is Dr. Markeisha Smith, one of the many people involved in this effort. Miller. And thank you for being here. Dr. Smith. Miller. Dr. Miller, I'm sorry. That's okay. I apologize. <laughs> That's okay. Oh my I'll, goodness. Be, I'll be Dr. Smith. Uh, Dr. Miller, Marquisha <laughs> Miller is with us today. And this great event's coming up at the Kroger Center. Um, so tell us more about what's happening. It's kind of an, a really elegant concert fundraiser coming up. Yes. And mm -hmm. so really it is a, it's a very um, entertaining way mm -hmm. to really bring um, light to an issue that many people find very hard to talk about. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things we know is there's a big stigma that's attached to mental illness. Mm -hmm. And so the event is a tribute to Luther Vandross. Okay? Okay. And so a lot of people may say, why Luther Vandross? But if you go back and you do the history and you really research, um, there's a lot of meat to that. Um, one of the things, and Luther had this very, this great quote that talked about the fact that his music said things that many times people found hard to say. And so during that time, the era of his music, I think that it was really noted that he realized that there was a great stigma on people really speaking out and seeking help. And so it's a tribute to Luther Vandross featuring Danny Clay. Mm -hmm. And if you're not familiar with Danny Clay, um, he has done great works with Tyler Perry. Um, he was discovered by Steve Harvey. He has toured all over the world doing Luther Vandross tribute. So this is not his first rodeo. Okay. Um, this is what he does. And I'm so excited that he reached out and said, I want to team up. What can we do to really bring light to this? And so this is so exciting. Um, it's a great time. It's going to be a great show. Notice this show. Okay, because we're going to put on a really great show here, yeah. but most importantly, it's going to really break, raise the awareness piece, and we need to raise the funds, too. And that's what it's all about, the raising yeah. money to continue the work and also yes. awareness of the problem. So let's talk about the problem, but let's start on kind of a positive note first. Okay. I think we all can agree that there is a stigma surrounding yes. mental health issues and mental health awareness and whatnot, but what strides have been made in breaking that down? Well, one of the things that um, more people, and we can see, are at actually reaching out for help. And one of the things I think that we can contribute to that is people are being made aware of resources. And the first thing is always for people to actually know help is there. And so, you know, when we have these events, one of the things that, you know, being president of NAMI Mid-Carolina, one of the things that we do every year we put on a walk. And this walk actually brings people together. It brings families together. Um, and it also it raises funds. Once again, we, we need the funds to provide the resources. But in doing that, I think once people know that, guess what? You're not alone. There is support and there are resources. Now people are becoming a little more open about reaching out. And then we're having so many celebrities who are now stepping forward to say, um, you know, I have a mental illness or I've had to seek out help. And that is just making great strides because now people are actually able to normalize it. And that's what we need to do. Right. Erasing that stigma just one bit at a time. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so we are making great strides for that, but we need to continue to do that. And we need to do it in non-threatening ways. And that is what this event does. This event is really identified as a non-threatening way for people to come out, have a good time, and, of course, we're going to have resources set up there for people, for NAMI. Um, we're also pulling in other mental health providers in the community to know, hey, guess what? We all go through something, and there's help out there for it. It sounds like a really good time. It's kind of a twofold situation with right. the, the concert, the event, and yes. also the resources before and afterward. And that's the idea. Right. That's the right. idea, to give people a good show and to give people really good quality resources. So with people, with more and more people speaking out, is this kind of an issue, I guess there's never 
quite a solution to it. There isn't. There isn't, yeah. But with more and more people speaking out about it, it makes it easier to talk about, deal with, and combat. Right. And talk about the, I guess, the spectrum of people it affects. Younger folks to older folks, really no one is immune from this. Oh, absolutely not. One of the things we know is that there are certain diagnoses that are made um, at certain ages. It, it really takes a while for a diagnosis to actually um, to surface, as we like to say, or to mature. Um, however, we know that it varies um, from children all the way up to the elderly. And so in knowing and recognizing that, it is just so important now that we've started conversations and in starting conversations now more and more people are knowing what to look for and you know Leland one of the things that we see is that I think sometimes we're so reactive to things every time something happens we want to say mental illness was involved but one of the things that we've got to get much better with is being preventive and really recognizing and understanding that we've got to be able to identify resources point people toward resources and help people to know signs and symptoms and so in doing a community events that's what we're able to do and I think those are some of the great strides that we're able to do to actually move in the direction that we're trying to go. What are some of the more specific challenges about mental health issues that face African Americans? Um, first and foremost you know there's this old cliche what goes on in the house stays in the house and so it really combats um, the idea of teaching people how to speak out about emotions about things that they may be going through. And so because of that, um, we know that um, statistics show that there are major mental illnesses among the African American community. However, they're swept under the rug. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we like to pull in spirituality a lot more um, rather than we'll pray about it. You know, we'll do this rather than actually face the issue. But mm -hmm. I often like to say, if you're sick physically, we go to the doctor. Okay. Sure, yeah. And so if something is going on mentally and emotionally, it's also best that we seek that professional help as well. And so I really think that there are so many cultural barriers, and not just with African Americans, but there are other cultural barriers that are out there that actually prevent people from actually going forth and seeking out that help. And so actually beginning to normalize it it more and actually really beginning to pull people into a direction of understanding that in order to be well completely mm -hmm. your mental and your emotional health is just as important as your physical it's like a, it's a whole body holistic kind of situation that's the idea all right thank you dr miller my pleasure dr smith is coming up next <laughs> so my mind was thinking ahead as it always is i apologize for that my pleasure but great to have you my pl always <laughs> All right, June is Alzheimer's Awareness Month, and community advocates Dr. Macy Smith and Ivory Thigpen, who represents Richland County in the State House, will be here to tell you more where you can find help and support if you have a loved one battling the disease. Termites. Feasting on homes 24 7. We're on the move, Roger. We're good. Termites never stop trying to get in. At Terminix, we never stop working to keep them out because they can cause thousands of dollars in damage. Call Terminix now to schedule a free termite inspection. As America's leading termite control provider, we'll do whatever it takes to stop them in their tracks. 100% satisfaction guaranteed. To schedule a free termite inspection, call 1-800-333-2670 and protect your home. And if they ever do come back, so will we. To schedule a free termite inspection, call 1-800-333-2670 or visit Terminix. Com. Terminix, defenders of home. WIS loves to share stories of people making a difference, people who work to build a better community. If you know someone who should be highlighted as a community builder, nominate them at WISTV.com slash builder. Letting you know first, WIS first alert weather. Welcome back this morning. We are celebrating, uh, well not celebrating, but marking another special month and that is uh, Dementia and Alzheimer's Awareness Month. Dementia Speaks 
is coming up in the coming months and a couple classes will be held for community members who might need help navigating the disease with their loved ones or friends or other family members. So this morning I'm joined by Dr. Macy Smith, a gerontologist and educator. You wear many hats. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having us. Absolutely. And this is Ivory Thigpen. You are a eight house lawmaker and you're opening up your church to have these seminars in when they begin in the next uh, few days. So thank you for being here too. Thank you. All right. So Macy, let's just start. We've uh, talked about this before a couple of times yes. and it's a very important issue and it bears bringing to the forefront every yes. now and then. Yes. Um, what's new? What's the latest in this fight to educate people on the seriousness uh, of this disease? Well, June, of course, is Alzheimer's Awareness Month and the numbers are steadily growing. Mm -hmm. We know from the research that every 65 seconds someone develops Alzheimer's disease in, in our country. Approximately 5.7 million individuals are living with Alzheimer's disease. In South Carolina, we have increased in terms of uh, deaths from Alzheimer's disease exponentially because mm -hmm. South Carolina is an aging state. We're expected to grow 50% within the coming decades in terms of diagnosis from Alzheimer's disease. Mm -hmm. Alzheimer's disease is only one type of dementia. There are 100 types, over 100 types of dementia. And so it does impair one's ability to use their cognitive state. And so that affects the way they process information, mm -hmm. the way they navigate their environment, and it also affects the way they manage other comorbid conditions. And so because we know that family care caregivers and natural supports bear the brunt of the responsibilities as it relates to providing that care. Within that gap is education um, to be able to prepare family members on how to deal with the, uh, the disease, what medications are appropriate, and what are some of the behaviors that may be considered challenging, how to mitigate those. And these Dementia Speaks classes are something you all continue to uh, be awarded funding for, which yes. is very great, during your third year now hosting these. And you've got, I believe it's five or six coming up here. Yes, so we, the Columbia Urban League is funded mm -hmm. through the Lieutenant Governor's Office on Aging, um, and we're hoping to continue going forward uh, with the Dementia Speaks seminars. It's a three to four day seminar. We do one day per week for about an hour to an hour and a half and we provide basic information on Alzheimer's disease and dementia, how to communicate effectively, how to manage those behaviors and also what some of those community resources are. And what we know is that we do have to partner with entities that are already established in the community such as Dr. Thigpen's church, Rehoboth, because you know our seniors are already there, the family caregivers are already there, so why not meet them literally where they are with oh. the information? Well, let's talk about that, Ivory. Um, why was it important to you to open up your church uh, for this purpose and to host these seminars? Sure. Uh, being a part of the community and a community-focused church, as well as a community leader, uh, we know that the issues of persons in our community are not isolated. Uh, I believe that the church bears a great responsibility and not only open its doors for uh, spiritual needs, uh, but kind of a continuation of the last segment. Uh, we also can be a resource uh, we don't have to be the expert in everything, but we definitely can be a trusted uh, bridge to many of the professional services that our community is in dire need of. Have you hosted this kind of a seminar before at the church? or uh, We host various seminars, not in this area. Uh, most recently, in the last couple of years, we too have been working with the Lieutenant Governor's Office on Aging, and we have found that is uh, a pressing issue among months of our seniors. Uh, really, when you consider that a large population of the people who move to South Carolina, especially the transient Northeast area, they're, they're retirees from other areas. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're persons who have uh, really um, lived their lives, but sometimes find that there are unexpected and unplanned uh, health and even mental challenges. Mm -hmm. And, and that's what you are obviously working directly to address. Oh, absolutely. When somebody has a, a diagnosis or a life-limiting diagnosis, mm -hmm. I always say they go to the doctor for appeal and they go to the church for a prayer. But somebody got to help me help me help my mom take a bath. Mm -hmm. How do I get my mom to eat? How do I help her understand? And so in the middle is education. We teach family caregivers different strategies and techniques on how to help that person maintain the best quality of living possible. It's really care for the person affected by the disease, but also the caregiver as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. all the way around. It, it, it is. And there is a disparity or a lack of education uh, on this in the black community particularly, and that's a 
one area of focus for you as well as educating um, African American caregivers, especially because African Americans are more affected by this than uh, white counterparts. Right, and, and the, the studies show that African Americans are two times more likely to develop the disease, mm -hmm. and so we want to be able to get in there, provide information, education, because there is no cure. Once they better understand what happens to the brain pathologically, mm -hmm. then they can better understand how to provide that care. And I was going to add, too, that oftentimes the caregiver is lost in the shuffle. And most of the disease processes, if not all, affect the entire family. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. We often call the family caregiver the invisible patient because when they go into the doctor's office, it's all about that person who has a chronic illness. But studies show that approximately 30 to 35 percent of family caregivers, they pass away before the person who has a chronic illness because mm -hmm. they're not providing care for themselves. That's, that's tragic. It is. Yeah, it's it's really a public tragic, health epidemic. With awareness, we can change. Yeah, okay. absolutely. All right, let's pop up the details again. These Dementia Speaks classes are coming up at Rehoboth Baptist Church in Columbia, June 6, 13, 20, and 27. One to two on those days. Register at dtconsultant.com. Thank you both for being here this Thank morning. Thank you for Thank having you. us. If you've been in a car wreck, the Nasty Pool Law Firm will fight for you. We got a $600,000 settlement for head-on collision. Call all teams now! Don't scream, call a king. To get your attorney, dial all twos. He's using a CPAP machine for his sleep apnea. Now he sleeps like a baby. But if it isn't cleaned well, it could make him sick. I'm so relieved we found the SoClean sanitizer. I'm Dr. Joseph Cranin, a sleep apnea specialist. I recommend SoClean to my patients because it kills 99.9% .9 of bacteria and germs, significantly reducing the risk of infection from an improperly clean CPAP. Just drop the mask in and walk away. No more taking it apart and washing by hand every day. SoClean safely sanitizes and disinfects your mask, hose, and reservoir without any harsh chemicals and works on all popular CPAPs. Try the world's first automated CPAP sanitizer, risk-free for 30 days. Call 800-842-9893. And no more getting sick from a dirty CPAP. Call now to try SoClean risk-free for 30 days. Call 800-842-9893 or visit TrySoClean.com. WIS News 10 Sunrise and the WIS News 10 app makes your morning drive easier with accident reports, closings, and delays all on air and on our app. With first alert traffic brought to you by Midland Air so you can start every morning with the sunrise. Well, thanks for joining us this morning on Awareness. That is our show. Hopefully you learned something good today. See you back here next time. Have a great rest of your morning.